My name is Yulia Litvinets, and I'm the director of the National Art Museum of Ukraine. In this video, we will take a look at the history of special funds starting in the 1930s, as well as the fate of some Ukrainian artists. The history of the Kyiv City Museum of Antiquities and Arts and its existence distinctly reflects the changes that took place in the country. Today it consists of three museums – National Museum of Ukraine of Folk Decorative Art, National Museum of the History of Ukraine and National Art Museum of Ukraine. The latter was opened in 1899, starting with an archaeology exhibition. At first, the museum had archaeological, art industrial and historical household departments. And art department was opened in a few years. The first works to be included into the collection were Ivan Selizhnev's sketch of the monument to Shevchenko, Petro Holodny's The Girl and the Peacock, Serhiy Vasilkivsky's Step River in the Katerina Slavshina, and Ilya Repin's, or as it was recorded in the inventory book, Repin's sketch for Golgotha. By the way, the inventory book was kept in Ukrainian. Mykola Bilashivsky, the museum's first director, aptly defined its priorities. We collect the works of Ukrainian artists who were born in Ukraine and devoted all their creativity to Ukraine those who were born in other countries but lived in Ukraine and painted Ukraine, Ukrainians who left homeland but did not forget their roots and turned to Ukraine in their art. In 1934, during the preparation of the 15 years of the Red Army and Navy exhibition, the entire historical collection was actually evicted to the museum town, which was located on the territory of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. This was the beginning of the historical museum creation, and also the beginning of this large collection dispersal. Unfortunately, in 1936, the party ideologues had a different idea and began dividing the museum collections, singling out Russian artists and creating the Museum of Russian Art based on the Kyiv Art Gallery. Thus, Arheb Kuinji, Ivan Ivazovsky, Volodymyr Borovikovsky were taken away from us. This was only the first step. The next one was to remove the works with a strong national character. After the collection was redistributed to different museums on a national basis, repressions against Ukrainian artists began, along with the repressions against their works. When artists were detained, personal belongings got confiscated, along with the artworks. If the works of repressed artists were museum collections, they were also subject to confiscation. The history of the Special Secret Fund formation and its practice from 1937 to the present time vividly represent how the colonizing Soviet system and repressions worked, and how we are ultimately trying to shape the Ukrainian context by overcoming this historical trauma. The Special Fund was formed at the State Ukrainian Museum, today National Art Museum of Ukraine, during 1937-1939. The works of enemies of the people, formalists, nationalists, were brought here from the museums of Kharkiv, Odessa, Kiev, Poltava, and from the funds of the Ukrainian art exhibition. These were the artworks of those who, according to party ideologues, distorted reality. Thus, the special fund included the works of Alexandra Exter, Alexander Bohomazov, David Burluk, Viktor Palmov, Alexa Hryshenko, Anufri Bizukov, Leonila Hrytsenko, Semen Yoffe, Mikhailo Boychuk, Mikhailo Zhuk, and many other artists ended up in the special collection. Most of the artists were completely crossed out of the history of Ukrainian arts for a long time. Fates of these masters were tragic because the machine of oppression did not care neither for their age nor sex. Mikhailo Boychuk was 55 when he was executed. Sofia Anna Lipinska Boychuk was 53, Ivan Lipkivsky 45, Vasil Silvestre 49, Mikola Vasuk 72. All of them, despite their unique artistic style and view on life, were executed based on accusations of counter-revolutionary nationalistic activity. 
Onufri Bizikov and Kirill Vosduk were given lengthy prison sentences. Only those who left Ukraine in time managed to survive. Josip Hurvich, Irina Zdanko, Aksana Pavlenko, Antonina Ivanova moved to Moscow. Abram Cherkaski had to move to Kazakhstan involuntarily. Those who remained in Ukraine and evaded repressions changed their life and artistic manner forever. Removal of artworks, archival materials and documents took place according to the secret order of the Department of Arts under the Council of People's Commissars of the Ukrainian SSR on the removal of formalistic, politically and ideologically harmful museum items. A commission was created at the museum, which, in addition to verified comrades, included an employee of the NKVD mandatorily. Works of art and various materials that fell under these definitions were seized and sent to the special fund at the State Ukrainian Museum under the secret label. One of the documents preserved in the NAMU archive is quite indicative. Act September 8, 1937, committee reviewed the works of public enemies Padalka, Sedliar, Hvostuk, Lipkivsky, Nalepinska Boychuk, and Dindo, which were removed in a timely fashion from the National Ukrainian Museum and preserved in the special collection within the same museum. The committee therefore states said works due to their counter revolutionary Boychuk formalist method are to be considered harmful. They distort our socialist reality, provide false images of the Soviet people, have no artistic or museum value, and henceforth are to be destroyed as works created by public enemies. A list with 29 titles of the counter-revolutionary items is enclosed. All items that were delivered to the museum special fund during 1937-1939 were recorded into a special inventory book. In 1939, the inventory book of the special fund contained 1,747 items, including paintings, graphics, book covers, photographs, sculptures, pottery, folders with museum items, posters, crosses, icons, books, diplomats, correspondence, newspaper clippings. Along with the formation of the secret fund, repressions began in the museum. The director, restorer, head of the photo laboratory and scientific staff were arrested and shot. Simultaneously with the beginning of unreliable works confiscation on September the 10th and until October the 10th of 1937, a special committee started working in Kyiv, tasked with checking the state of museums. As a result of the committee's work, an act was issued in which the part concerning our museum stated the following. The exposition does not show the development of Ukrainian folk and throughout the years of the Soviet era at all. The staff of the museum is contaminated due to the absence of the party members and proletariat. It was stated that among the museum staff there were spies and saboteurs, Onishuk, Halushenko, Krivoshe, who have already been arrested by the NKVD, while the museum is a storage place of all sorts of counter-revolutionary trash for public enemies, such as Vinnychenko's letters, Krajewski's archive, Petlura badges. All secret funds objects supposed to have been destroyed. Unfortunately, in 1952, this happened to the special funds of the National Museum in Lviv, where 1,728 classic words of Ukrainian fine art of the end of the 19th and the first half of the 20th centuries were removed and destroyed as ideologically harmful. Among them were works of Arhipenko, Novakivsky, Boyshuk, etc., along with more than 4,000 books and 138 volumes and folders of archival materials. The secret funds of our museum survived 
and there were several reasons for that. At the beginning of World War II, amongst half of the staff was executed when the remaining half wasn't even aware of the secret fund's existence. During World War II, 80 works from the special fund were taken away by the Nazis as examples of Soviet content, glorification of the revolution, images of the Red Army, the collective farm, etc., or as typical examples of expressionism and futurism. After Kyiv was liberated, the museum saw the return of evacuated exhibits and their restoration. According to the act dated June 30, 1944, the losses amounted to 60,000 items. The majority of works taken to Germany never returned. The special fund lost plenty of paintings. Of 26 paintings by Abram Cherkasky, only 15 remained. Of 24 works by Viktor Palmov, only 16. Two works by David Burluk, Kazak Mamai and Workers' Village were also lost. Exactly this complicated post-war chaotic movement was chosen for viewing the special collections and their correlation with requirements. By the way, the Commission members were those verified comrades. Works from the pre-war special fund were divided into categories for preservation, graphics, paintings, and catalogued again back to the special fund with the same classified level. Location of archival materials and photographs is still unknown. Works taken away by the Nazis were not included in the list of losses, as well as Ukrainian icons. Attempts to destroy the special funds were repeated in 1952, but unlike in Lviv, our employees re-catalogued the special funds to Category 0 or Category 5, meaning works with low professional and ideological level and are subject to confiscation. Museum staff re-catalogued works of Category 0. This helped hide these works from the view of supervisory authorities. The artworks themselves were removed from their frames and placed into big rolls. The following fact supports the notion that the museum employees adhered to secrecy. An exhibition of Anufri Bizukov's works took place in 1971. He was one of Boschuk's students. Onufri was sentenced to three years in prison in 1935. His works, which were being preserved in the special fund of our museum, were showcased in the catalog as items which disappeared during World War II. The first post-war studies in which works from the special fund appear emerged during the short-lived period of the Khrushchev thaw. In 1967, in the fifth volume of the History of Ukrainian Art, researchers Brona and Lobanovsky mentioned Palmos for the Soviet power Shekman's The Resettlers and Bohomazov's Sharpening of Saws. However, most of the works of the Special Fund remained hidden. In 1998, the museum hosted the first exhibition of the Special Fund, curated by Svetlana Rapchua and Dmitro Gorbachev. However, only a small number of works managed to be exhibited. Systemic work on the study of Special Funds began almost as soon as Ukraine gained independence. The search and identification of all works and artists that were in the special fund began. First, of course, we turned to the catalogues of exhibitions of those times, but they were also cleaned. Since 2015, all documents from the Soviet period have been opened. The activities of the Soviet special services were declassified by the law on access to the archives of the repressive bodies of the communist totalitarian regime of 1917-1991. The personal cases of repressed and executed Ukrainians are horrifying, often in the reason for execution column only this was mentioned, Ukrainian. In the early 2000s, the museum organized many international projects that took place in Italy, Canada and Germany. Gradually, we're bringing Ukrainian art and Ukrainian modernism back into the global context.